Hello friends, welcome to this session on Let's Tute. Today we are going to revise and learn some tips and tricks for the chapter Real Numbers. Friends, this chapter comes for 6 marks in the CBSC exam. One question will be asked in each section A, B and C. Now, let's start our session. As we already know, rational numbers and irrational numbers together form real numbers. Now, rational numbers are the numbers which can be represented in the form of P by Q, where Q can never be equal to 0. These numbers can be terminating or non-terminating. Whereas, numbers which neither terminate nor repeat are called as irrational numbers. So, from this we can conclude that all numbers are real numbers. You can get such tree diagram or flowchart or a quick revision guide in our math chart book. You can order it from our website www.letstude.com or else you can order it from Amazon too. Now, in this chapter, we are going to learn important properties of positive integers which are Euclid's division lemma and fundamental theorem of arithmetics. Before understanding what is Euclid's division lemma, let's understand why this is used. So Euclid's division lemma is used to find HCF, that is highest common factor, which is also known as GCF, greatest common factor of two positive integers. Now let's understand this division lemma with the help of an example. Suppose if we have 215 flower pots and 1290 flowers, then what will be the maximum numbers of flowers in each pot? Here, we got remainder as 0, then the maximum number of flowers in each pot will be 6. But if we want to write it in the form of an equation, how can we write it? We write it as dividend is equal to divisor multiplied by quotient plus remainder. Or A is equal to B into C plus R. So here our equation will be 1290 is equal to 215 multiplied by 6 plus 0. Now friends, most of you get confused between dividend and divisor. So always remember that dividend has more letters, hence bigger number is dividend and divisor has lesser number of letters, hence the smaller one is divisor. Friends, please remember that this is just a trick to remember what is dividend and what is divisor and this is not a mathematical formula. In equation a is equal to bq plus r, r can be more than 0 or equal to 0 and it should be less than b. Now why is it supposed to be less than b? Because here b is the divisor and if r is bigger than b which means the number can be further divided. Hence r is always smaller than b. Like here, if the remainder is greater than the divisor, then it can be further divided. Hence, remainder is always smaller than the divisor. Friends, the equation A is equal to BQ plus R is nothing but Euclid's division lemma. The theorem states that given positive integers A and B, there exist unique integers Q and R satisfying the given equation. Most of the students get confused between Euclid's division lemma and Euclid's division algorithm. The equation A is equal to BQ plus R is the Euclid's division lemma. And we use this lemma in algorithm till we get the remainder as 0. So, Euclid's division algorithm is nothing but the series of well-defined steps which gives procedure for solving a problem. Now let's try to understand Euclid's division algorithm with the help of a given example. Suppose we have given two positive integers 225 and 135 and we have to find the HCF of them. Now in the last step we can see that the remainder has become zero so our steps stop. Since the divisor at this stage is 45, the HCF of 225 and 135 is 45. We will give each step name such as step 1, 2 and so on and this procedure is called as Euclid's division algorithm. Friends, in order to see the detailed procedure of solving this problem, 
do watch our video on exercise 1.1 problem solving now let's move on to the next part of the chapter fundamental theorem of arithmetic fundamental theorem of arithmetic states that every composite number can be expressed or factorized as a product of primes and this factorization is unique apart from the order in which the prime factors occur let's break this and understand this friends first let's revise what is composite number and what is prime number composite numbers are the numbers which have more than two divisors the smallest composite number is 4 whereas prime numbers are the numbers which get divided by itself and one only and the smallest prime number is 2 the first statement states that every composite can be expressed as a product of primes this means that we can write the product or factorize composite number in primes for example 2260 Here we have factorized two two six zero as two into two into five into one one three as the product of primes. So we have proved the first statement that every composite number can be expressed as product of primes. The second statement is factorization is unique apart from the order in which the prime factors occur. This means we can either write it as two into two into five into one one three in ascending order. or in the descending order that is 1 1 3 multiplied by 5 multiplied by 2 into 2 so here we have proved both the statements now friends we have already seen two theorems and have learned about rational and irrational numbers so what do you think root 2 is a rational number or an irrational number decimal value of root 2 is 1.4142135623730 which is non repeating and non terminating and the numbers which are non terminating and non repeating are called as irrational numbers so we know that root 2 will be an irrational number but when we have to prove this with the help of a theorem we have to remember two important points first we are going to use contradiction to prove this theorem that is first we will assume that root 2 is a rational number if any number divides the square of a number then it will divide that number also this will help you to explain the theorem now moving on to the rational numbers we already know that they have terminating or non terminating decimal expansion Let's learn more about terminating decimal expansion. Suppose we have given rational number 0.425. We can write it as follows. Friends, do you have any idea what we will get if we cancel the common factors between the numerator and the denominator? Here, by this example we can say that any real number which has a decimal expansion that terminates can be expressed as a rational number p by q whose denominator is a power of 10 where q is in the form of 2 raised to n 5 raised to m which are the prime factors of q and n and n m are some non negative integers and this is a theorem which states that let x be a rational number whose decimal expansion terminates then x can be expressed in the form of p by q where p and q are coprime and the prime factorization of q is in the form of 2 raised to n 5 raised to m where n m are non negative integers the vice versa of this theorem is also true let x is equal to p by q be a rational number such that the prime factorization of q is in the form of 2 raised to n 5 raised to m where n m are non negative integers then x has a decimal expansion which terminates but friends what about the rational numbers whose prime factorization of q is not in the form of 2 raised to n 5 raised to m they are non terminating and repeating rational numbers there is a theorem for this condition which states that let x is equal to p by q where p and q are coprimes be a rational number such that prime factorization of q is not of the form of 2 raised to n 5 raised to m 
where n, m are non-negative integers, then x has a decimal expansion which is non-terminating repeating, also called as recurring. Well friends, in just about 10 minutes, we have finished revising the entire chapter of real numbers. I hope you have enjoyed this session. We have such sessions on all the topics of CBSC. Do watch them on our channel. Till then, keep watching, keep learning. And yes, don't forget to hit the bell icon to never miss another update from Let's Tute. Thank you.